In today's video, we'll check out the X-Arcade Arcade 2 TV XR, which is a pedestal and control panel for your gaming devices. That is, you will need to connect it to another device to make use of it. In this video, we'll check it out with a Raspberry Pi 5, an ROG Ally, and a Steam Deck. But there are a number of other devices you could use with it, including classic consoles with the appropriate adapters, VR headsets, and more. I would like to thank X-Arcade for shipping this unit to me. I've marked this video as sponsored because it was shipped to me for review, but no money exchanged hands and all opinions are my own and they didn't see the video beforehand. There is an affiliate link below which will save you 10% off your purchase if you decide to pick one up. In this video, we'll go through the entire process from unboxing to assembly, the initial setup, and check it out with various devices. As a result, it's a little long, and I've added chapter markers below so you can skip around easily and watch what's of most interest to you. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. When your X-Arcade Arcade 2 TV XR package arrives, it'll be in two boxes. The wider of the two contains the control panel. The longer, heavier box contains all the components for the pedestal. We'll start by opening the box with the control panel. This smaller box contains all the cables and adapters, which we'll take a look at after everything is assembled. Also included in this package is a HEC-8 soundbar. The control deck itself supports two players. Each player includes eight buttons, a joystick, a player one and player two start button. There is no spinner built in, but there is a trackball which can be used with most spinner games. On the sides is a button which would be nice for using the control panel with virtual pinball, either using a PC or a virtual headset such as a MetaQuest 2 or 3. This latch at the back is for the height adjustment once we get it installed to the pedestal. Inside these compartments you'll find a bat top, in case you want to swap it out with the ball. And on the right side is a set of adjustment tools. Now let's move on to the box containing the pedestal components. The box containing the pedestal is double boxed. There are a lot of parts here, so make sure you have plenty of space for the assembly. The pedestal assembly guide is well done, but not all the sub-assemblies will appear in the illustrations. There are a number of parts, and one part is a little bit tricky. All the hardware you need is clearly described, and the hardware for each step was clearly documented. Now let's move on to the pedestal assembly. Now we'll assemble the pedestal. Here's a quick look of all the parts that we'll be using for the assembly. The hardware pack is arranged such that the parts for each step are labeled based on the step, which makes things easier. That is, for step one, you only use the parts shown here, and the same with steps 2, 3, and 5, and so forth. All the tools you need are at the bottom. Let's go ahead and move on to step number 1. For step number 1, take part number 11 and part number 4 and insert part 4 into number 11. Using two M8 by 15 hex screws, screw them in loosely. That is, screw it together, then loosen it a few turns, and you'll do that for each step until we get to number 6. I'll remind you along the way. Next, take part number 9 and number 6 and insert number 6 into part number 9. Then again, secure them loosely with two M8 by 15 screws. We'll do the same for part number 10 and number 7. Insert 7 into 10 and loosely install two M8 by 15 screws. For the last sub-assembly on step number one, take part 12 and part five, and insert part five into part 12, and loosely secure the two with two M8 by 15 screws. For step number two, you may find it easier to arrange parts one, three, and two like this. Then using the hardware in the step two, three, and five section of the hardware pack, we'll take part number one and screw it into part number three using two M8 by 15 screws on each side. 
you may find it easier to place the screw on the end of the Allen wrench, then put it through the hole and into part three. Then repeat for both screws. Again, make sure you leave them slightly loose. Now take part two and using two M8 by 15 screws, insert them through the holes into part three and again, loosely tighten. Now we'll assemble the center frame. There are two part number 13s. Each will be screwed in to both sides of part 8, which is the light frame. Note that the longer portion of each should extend outward from the text of the frame. Align part 13 over part 8, then using two M8 by 15 screws, lightly screw in both screws. Then repeat for the opposite side. In step 4, we'll assemble the rack. To make this part easier to visualize, let's step through it. I started with the opposite side than what was discussed in the manual. It doesn't matter which side you start with as long as the orientation is the same. Take the center frame that we assembled in the previous step and stand part 8 up on number 13 such that you can read the X-Arcade logo through the glass. Then take the part number 5 and part number 12 assembly and slide it into the wider side of part 13 and line up the holes with part number 13. Then repeat the same for the part 7 and the part 10 assembly. Next, insert the long number 19 bolt through both holes. You'll need to slightly move the frame around to get them through, but this part isn't too difficult. You may find it easier if you get stuck to use the Allen wrench to get the screw all the way through. On the opposite side, twist on the self-locking nut, then use the wrench to hold it in place and loosely tighten with the Allen wrench. Repeat for both of the screws. Now take the assembly and flip it on its side. Insert the matching assembly for the opposite side for the thinner portion then the same for the wider portion and make sure all four frame pieces are in the same orientation and line up the holes. Now carefully and slowly flip the frame on its side. Insert the long number 19 bolts through the holes as far as you can. This is where I ran into difficulty. I found I had to screw in the bolts in order to make it all the way through. This was the most time consuming part of the assembly. Once the bolts were mostly through, I then flipped the entire frame up. And if you're having difficulty, you may find doing the same sooner a bit easier. Once the bolts are all the way through, then loosely install both self-locking number 20 nuts to both of the number 19 bolts. As there are a number of threads on the long number 19 bolt, you may wind up getting a rhythm for it, kind of like what you see here. For step number five, take the base assembly from step number two and install it to the bottom of the rack using four M8 by 15 screws. I found it easier to attach the screws to the Allen wrench, then put it through the hole at the bottom of the base and into the main rack assembly, and then loosely tighten. Make sure the horizontal bar on the base, part number three, is towards the back of the rack. After installing screws through all four corners of the base, you can now stand it upright and it should look like this. Step six is easy. We'll just tighten all the screws. Starting with the sides, tighten all four screws. Now tighten all four screws at the base of the pedestal. Using both the wrench and the Allen wrench, tighten the four front screws. We'll now do the same for all eight screws on the inside tubes. Flip the pedestal flat on the ground and tighten all four screws at the bottom. Now using the M6 by 27 number 18 screws, Put it through the wheel and screw it into the back side of the bottom of the base. Repeat for both wheels. 
Now install all four feet levelers to the bottom of the base. Now we can take the pedestal stand and set it upright. Squeeze the spring handle at the bottom back of the control unit and slide it over the metal frame. By pressing in on the handle and pulling up or down, you can adjust the height of the control unit. Then release the handle to lock it into place. Make sure everything's level. Then install the two metal fasteners and add the silicone cover on both sides. Congratulations, you've completed the assembly of the unit. In the next segment, we'll connect everything up. Now, we'll make the connections. This box was included with the control unit and contains all the cables and adapters. This DB9 to USB cable is for connecting to optional adapters for various gaming consoles. I'll place a link below to the product page so you can check out the compatibility and what adapters may be needed for your particular devices that you might want to use. This cable is to power the glass LED. We'll hook it up in a moment. This USB Type B to USB Type A cable is for connecting to a number of different devices, such as a PC or a Raspberry Pi. It basically carries the controller signals to the connected device. The USB A to USB C cable provides power for the LED lights on the pedestal. It also includes a dual USB A power adapter. You'll use this to power the LED lights. This mic includes a 3.5 millimeter jack that can be connected to the sound bar. There's some miscellaneous documentation for the sound bar and a sticker. Double-sided tape for attaching the sound bar to the control unit if you want. A USB-C Bluetooth adapter if you want to use Bluetooth instead of USB. The manual is rather extensive and covers a number of topics, including how to connect various gaming consoles, PCs, etc. to the unit. Now let's connect some of these cables. Under the control unit, connect the silver end into the bottom and the smaller end into the connector at the back of the LED light. Take the USB-B end and connect it to the back of the control unit. This USB Type-C connection will power the LED light, connect it to the USB-C port below the USB-B port. The opposite USB-A in can be connected to the power adapter. While the soundbar shown here was included, I didn't see it listed in the What's Included section on the website. I'll notate below if it's included in all shipments in the future. I'm going to go ahead and install the soundbar to the back, I'll just remove one side of the double-sided tape and attach it to the bottom and do so for both sides. At the back of the soundbar, this is where you can connect the mic if you'd like. Then position the soundbar and give it a good press. And you can also insert the mic if you want. If you'll be using the unit with the MetaQuest 2 or 3, the controllers will fit into the left and right side. Now let's just take a quick look around. Now that everything's set up, let's check out some gameplay. On the control unit touch panel, there is a player 1 and player 2 turbo option for rapid fire shooting games, as well as a player 1 and 2 mode button. The mode buttons allow setting the unit for keyboard, D input, or X input, depending on the gaming system connected. For the Raspberry Pi 5 running Batocera, I'll use X input mode by pressing and holding the button 3 and holding the mode button for player 1 for around 5 seconds. The controller will then reboot and become active in that mode. Pressing the middle button will change the LED lighting effects. Here are some quick examples.
I've connected a Raspberry Pi 5 to the control unit without a case so you can see all the connections easily. You'll want a cooling solution for the Pi 5 with a case. A few I recommend are the Kennekit cases. This particular kit includes everything, including the Pi 5, and could easily be attached to the back of the control unit, maybe with some Velcro. Or if you want the Pi 5 to look like a mini desktop PC, the Pyron Man 5 case looks sharp and includes an excellent cooler, but no Pi 5 is included with the case. But let's go over the connections quickly. We have the USB-C power input here, the micro HDMI, the full-size HDMI cable, the USB connection to the soundbar, and Botticera is configured to output through the soundbar. The USB stick has Botticera installed, but you can also use Recallbox or even RetroPie once it's publicly available. This USB-A cable is connected to the USB Type-B cable on the back of the control unit, and that's all the connections. In the area where I do most of my testing, there is a 42-inch TV mounted to the wall. I've connected the Pi 5 to this display, but we'll transition to screen capture and quickly show you how I map the buttons. The controller will be automatically recognized by Botocera, but if needed, you could also connect an Xbox 360 wire controller or a keyboard to navigate to the controller and Bluetooth settings. You can map the buttons however you prefer, but I use this configuration. For the select button, I map the left side button, then map each of the directions for the joystick. I use the far right two buttons for left and right shoulder, then press and held each button until I got to the hotkey. There, I mapped it to the same as the select button, which was the left side button. And that's it. From here, I tested several games, and the control unit worked just fine. If you need a detailed video on how to set up Botocera, I'll place a link up above. For this demonstration, I'll play one of my favorite all-time arcade games, Time Pilot. I'll press the left side button to insert a token, and P1 start to start the game. To exit the game, I'll press the left side button and start at the same time. The ROG Ally we have here is a full-blown Windows 11 handheld PC. We'll launch Steam in big picture mode and check out a trackball game. How about Missile Command Recharged? If you have a Steam Deck, you can also use that. We'll check out some brief gameplay of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge on the Arcade 2 TV XR. Special delivery! The Arcade 2 TV XR is a versatile gaming device. If you want to play arcade games on your existing TV or monitor, I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. It is a bit large, and it doesn't fold up. I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. There are many more devices you can use with this beyond what was shown here. If you'd like to see a video covering perhaps the MetaQuest 2 or something else, please let me know in the comments below. I will have an affiliate link below if you decide to pick one up for yourself or as a gift. If you order from my link, it will automatically trigger a 10% discount. 
Additionally, if you order before Black Friday, you'll also receive a free soundbar. After Black Friday, the soundbar will be an optional add-on priced at $69.99. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by clicking the like button. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.